Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava is just an Good evening to everyone. Yeah. Anthony, I'm going to put you on the spot for a couple of things. Um, I'm glad that we have some Sunday school uh, young people here today because tomorrow is the first day of Sunday school here at St. Thomas. And, and I had a special message prepared for all of the young people tomorrow. So I'm going to kind of practice on everyone tonight. So, uh, Anthony, uh, inside the altar area, go in, in, in the deacon door. And you see that thing that's on the bench there? Yes. Okay. Please bring it up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to identify what it is that Anthony is bringing up. How do you know already? You have good eyes, Terry. All right, so if any of you did not hear what Terry already answered, so what is this? A trophy. Uh, have any of you ever received a trophy in your life? Yes. Yeah? For, for being saintly? <laughs> for bowling. Okay, well, this is, these are, this is one of probably, I don't know, dozens if not more uh, <coughs> trophies from our athletic association uh, downstairs. And I, I grabbed one right before liturgy because I found one that didn't have a whole lot of dust on it. So I thought that would be a good one to bring up. So a trophy is something that we get uh, for accomplishments. You do something good, you get a trophy. Does that make sense? You're, you're with me so far? If, if you don't do something good, you're probably not going to get a trophy. So here's a question I'd like you to, to, to think about. And, and like we say to our young people, put your thinking caps on. Do you have them on? That's good. Haley has hers on. Um, oh, everyone has theirs on. You guys have yours on? Thumbs up, okay, I'll take that. Um, all right, so now you're all thinking, why would we call the cross a trophy? Did you remember seeing that? I know that was like five minutes ago. It's a long time ago, but you remember seeing that? Did you see it in the book? With your invincible weapon, the trophy of peace as an ally. Why would we call the cross a trophy? So. Tell me what, the, what happened on the cross. Why is the cross so important for us as, as Byzantine Catholics, as Christians? Jesus rose? Not yet. He died on the cross. You know, I didn't have to pull that out of too many people. I'm glad you all know that. If Jesus, all right, when did Jesus die on the cross? Are you sure? Are you positive? Well, thank goodness for that. Yes, okay, so Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday. But let me ask you this, like we, like we ask ourselves and, and see so many times, is that the end of the story? No, of course not. So Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose on Easter Sunday. He rose from the dead, and he bestowed this gift of eternal life to all of us. So the cross, therefore, for, for many centuries, was, was a symbol of, of execution, of, of torture. It was, anything, it was anything but a trophy. If you were, if you were uh, uh, assigned or, or sentenced to be uh, hung on the cross, that was a terrible, terrible thing. But Jesus transformed the cross from a symbol of death to a symbol of victory with the invincible weapon, your, uh, your weapon of peace, your trophy as an ally. And so Jesus turned the cross into something very wonderful for us because when he died on the cross and he arose again on Easter Sunday, he made the cross for us a symbol of victory. Now, Anthony, come over here one more time, please. So, um, you know, I don't know if you all know this, but Anthony is, uh, studies karate. Not only that, but Anthony is a black belt in karate. So don't mess with Anthony. <laughs> so, Anthony, what I'd like you to do, come over here so everyone can see you. Now, I'd like you to, to hold your arms out like this. Okay, now, how many crosses are there in the church right now? You can look around and you can count them, because I'm going to ask the kids to do this tomorrow, so hopefully you'll get a right answer, so I'll, I'll know how many crosses there are. Including pictures? Including pictures, of course, why not? Well, give me the answer after church. Okay, that's your job, Terry. Give me the answer after church. Uh, because whatever answer you give me, looking on the wall, it's going to be wrong. It's sort of a trick question. Because I'm asking Anthony to hold his hands out like that because each one of us has a cross within us. Have you ever heard it said, and this is a, a question for the adults, for the grown-ups here, put your, carry your cross. You ever heard that? Yes. You ever do that? Yes. 
Is it easy? You know, that's not a new saying. That's been around for hundreds and hundreds. You can relax, Anthony. That's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, even the church, well, don't leave yet. Okay. Uh, even the church fathers centuries ago, centuries ago, talked about carrying the cross that's within us. Because a good Christian does not only follow Christ by accepting crucifixion uh, for being a disciple in, back in the time in a world where being a Christian was quite illegal, but a good Christian always follows Christ not just by what we do on the outside, but how we live our lives and how we think and how we conduct ourselves and how we are on the inside, how we face our day-to-day -day struggles. And that's the cross that's within us. And, and, and sometimes that really is a struggle to follow Christ. But even those crosses, the crosses of being a good and faithful Christian for the whole world to see, or the, the struggles of being a good and faithful Christian only for God to see and for us to know. Okay, Anthony, one more time. The crosses that we carry within us are, are very much struggles as well. But our Lord tells us this, that we follow him and we accept our crosses, both the crosses on our shoulders on the outside and both the crosses that are uh, within our shoulders on the inside. We accept all of those crosses because not only do we imitate Christ, more than that, but it leads to something called glory. It may, leads to us being with God for all eternity, for graces and God's presence here in this life, and for those graces and God's presence eternally in the next life. Okay, Anthony, you did a good job. You can take the trophy back in. Um, and so what we all are called to do today is to think about the cross that perhaps is in our shoulders. What is it that's in your heart? Was it, what is it that's on your shoulders? What is that thing that you're struggling with? Whether these are things of adolescence. And adolescents, young kids have real problems too. But what about us as adults? Who seemingly have more experience and kind of know better? We have crosses too. But let us all remember that the following Christ with the cross upon our shoulders on the outside or on the inside, if we follow in Christ's footsteps, it leads to something beautiful. It leads to something called glory. It leads to peace in this world and eternal life in the age to come. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. And so when you make the sign of the cross today during liturgy, please make it so with the true conviction that God is with us. He's upon our shoulders. He's in our heart. And he's with us all the time and everywhere. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.